Uh, they have a massive human effigy, and uh, supposed to burn on Saturday, but the human effigy, of course, got got cancelled because of the uh, because of the rains that we had, which of course made international news. Um, just to give you guys a sense of what this looks like, uh, this is your Exodus lineup. Check out some of the rigs. Uh, it's it's a wild show. So. Everybody who, who's heard about Burning Man, for the most part, knows of it as a massive gathering in the desert that's a party. Uh, it's known for its sexuality, for its sensuality. That's there. Absolutely, no question. But underneath that, you can go to workshops with some of the leading uh, players in the world of politics, uh, culture, religion. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on psychedelics. In fact, that was one of the things that was really noteworthy. Uh, in fact, we have two two folks from our team, Ryan and Audrey Vanderclay, who've been uh, coming with me to regional burns, and this is their second time to Burning Man with me. And uh, so one of the workshops we were uh, fortunate to sit in on was Jesus and Psychedelics, and uh, revolving around the question of uh, integrating psychedelics into Christianity. So we had Methodist path pastors, Lutheran pastors, um Former pastors. Former pastors, all talking about how to use psychedelics uh, so they could feel Jesus, which is interesting, Brandon, because at the Parliament of World Religions two weeks ago, we did a, uh, a workshop where I sat through uh, with Richard Rohr discussing how to integrate psychedelics in the seminary and uh, to bring this into the church culture through that angle. Let me just and stop so you there for a second, because what races through my mind is the false Christ that Jesus himself warned about, false Christ, false messiahs. Um, I'm thinking of Helen Shookman, who channeled an entity called Jesus, she said, to write the Course in Miracles, but you know wanted to make it clear he was not the Jesus of the Bible. Um, I'm thinking right. about uh, Aldous Huxley and his, or was it Julian Huxley? I think it was Aldous Huxley having his conversation with um, Timothy O'Leary and how we need yeah. to use psychotropic drugs to open up humanity to more than one reality. But be careful because the opposition we have run into are the Christians, the Christians with their one God and one reality. And then they say to each other, but you and I both know with or without us, we're going to a time when drugs will be used to have people open up their understanding of many realities. It sounds right in keeping with what, you know, these guys were saying many, many decades ago. Absolutely. And this is really an outgrowth of that thinking. Uh, it has its roots in the counterculture of the 1960s. It has its roots, obviously, in Silicon Valley significantly. Uh, and, of course, it, it's its um, worldview historically is... Oh, we're really starting to move again. has its worldview historically root, rooted in Huxley, Timothy Leary, um, and, and within that milieu. So... Yeah, so Burning Man is is really the crossroads of so many things happening at the same time, and that's why I've been attending it. This is my fourth time here in the desert, uh, so we do we do the research because this is where the sharp edge of the spear is is really projected. Okay, and, so why uh, would and, my and, nineteen or twenty and twenty one year old guys in the control room never have heard of Burning Man? What is the average <laughs> age of the people attending? Now, why are you laughing? Number one, but number two, what's the average age of the people that attend? The average age, I understand, is 34 or 36. Most people who come are are in the in, in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Tons of people in the 60s and 70s. I uh, ran into one lady who is in her 80s. Uh, this is this is not a young person's event per se. Number one, it's expensive. It is super super expensive to get in. Uh, and then what do you mean? What do you mean? Your... Well, the tickets cost how much? Uh, the low end tickets start at five seventy five, I believe, and then move up to twenty five hundred dollars a ticket. And then, of course, you have to get here. Um, you've got to have all of your all of your uh, equipment for the week. There is no vendors, so you have to bring in all your own food, all your own water. You pack out all your own garbage. Um, I'm surrounded right now. I mean, there's a great big huge rig in front of me that's got to be worth close to uh, I would think maybe a quarter million dollars. Uh, more, more. It's just this is not a young person's event per se, but it is especially a West Coast event. This is San Francisco. This is Los Angeles. Um, I ran into a lot of people from Utah. I did surveys, so 
Ryan and Audrey helped me do almost, I think we're close to 420 or 430 surveys. And what do you uh, ask the folks? Survey. When you ask them, what, do you, what kind of questions are you ask, asking those folks? Oh, hang on one second. I'll try to snag one of my surveys out the back. Um, they are worldview surveys asking what religion they came out of. This is sorry, sorry, Brandon. This is this is all off, off the cuff. Yeah, well, that's As, what makes uh, this inter- that's what makes this inter- this interview so interesting. Actually, we're getting a real taste of of your exiting, and you're telling it's going to take several hours to get out. Just for the fo- folks who don't know, they had a massive rainstorm. It flooded right. this this. Uh, is that a lake bed you're on? Yes, yes, it's a massive lake bed. Hundreds and hundreds of square miles. Of not just regular dust or sand, it's an alkali lake bed. So on Monday night, we got hit with a massive dust storm, uh, literally blinded us. We were at the temple. That's another feature of this community, a massive, massive temple. And I mean, crazy huge. And uh, we got caught in a huge dust storm there. And uh, so it's an alkali, alkali lake bed, alkali dust, and it gets into everything. It's beautiful today. We don't have any any dust storms right now. And then, of course, the oddity was that we had a huge rainfall for a day and a half. And that turns the whole place into a quagmire. Vehicles are stuck. Um, art cars are stuck. People were walking out. Uh, and yet, at the same time, it was pretty chill. Folks and, realized and yet you, you told me up. on the phone when you did get a signal out on uh <laughs> Sunday or Monday, Monday, no, Sunday, Sunday, you told me that you had 15 to 20 pounds of this gook on your, on your feet per foot, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, there's massive ruts all over the place. Uh, they're going to have a hard time cleaning everything up. Uh, who owns, it's who owns the land? Who, the state? No, this is uh, federal government, Bureau of Land Management. So they rent it? They rent it or what? Yeah, there's a permitting process, and uh, that is dependent on how well the lake bed is left after the event is over. So it is a leave-no-trace event. People clean everything up, and they're supposed to. But with the massive dust we, or pardon me, mud we had, um, that's going to be really difficult. And, and, and by the way, there are wild. very, very wealthy people that fly in on their jets and then come in there, right? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. One moment, I gotta close windows here because this could be loud for you. Uh, yes, uh, we have we have we have uh, corporate jets. Uh, we have lots of aircraft that fly in. I was at the airport for a while doing surveys. Um, this is this is where Google comes to play. This is where Silicon Valley comes to play. Lots of cryptocurrency uh, leaders, lots of uh, individuals high up within the realm of uh, of uh, decentralized finance. Uh, you can go to workshops and all of those topics. Uh, in 2019, when I was here, we had the chief economist from the World Bank doing uh, research on how they could integrate the principles and the activities of Burning Man uh, into a into World Bank uh, projects. In uh, 2019, we had, I think, 52 U.S. mayors surveying the city, attending it so that they could take home uh, lessons learned. So this is more than just simply a party. 52, a 52 party. American mayors surveying Burning yes. Man to figure out how they can integrate it back at home. So that should make people feel really good. I'm being sarcastic. Because Burning Man is basically a new age, occultic, we will be like gods, free sex, free love. I mean, it's uh, Woodstock, 1960s, new age. Uh, our psychotropic drugs, altered states of consciousness, you know, uh, worldviews being represented there. I mean, I saw, I saw today. If I can find it while you're talking, they actually erected a tower of Babel there this year. Did they not? Yes, yes. In fact, I was inside the tower. T- I took lots of pictures. Uh, last night they burned the tower, so I was there while the uh, while the tower was uh, uh, consumed in flame. So we go to do the research because this is, again, where, where you have some of the leading figures in the global community, uh, including people from the young leaders of the World Economic Forum. We have run into them here, too. Uh, and I know that they were, again, at, uh, on site as well. Uh, the other thing that we do is when we have the opportunity, we have conversations uh, around Christian subjects, around, uh, around Jesus Christ and who God is. 
Um, so yesterday, last night, when uh, Babel, the tower, was burning, we had a lady sitting beside us. She struck a conversation with Brian, our partner. Uh, Brian's a blacksmith. He had a bunch of small crosses in his uh, in his bag. And they had been in this conversation. Um, and some for some reason, Brian pulls out a, a cross, hands it to her, and just simply says, trust Jesus. 